if you want to get better at understanding speaking and being understood in French, it's important to concentrate on learning spoken French, which is actually quite different from the written French that you probably learned at school. Finding a French TV show that you enjoy can be a fantastic way to practice and learn at home. Today, I thought we would analyze the scene from one of my personal favorites together, Lupin, which just released its new season. We will watch the clip at different speeds and explore some of the French grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation together. Are you ready? Here is a scene from the first episode of the third season of Lupin on Netflix. What can you understand? Don't worry, we'll explain everything later. For now, just try to catch those three expressions. On se barre, on se barre. It's colloquial everyday French for we are living. En cavale, en cavale means on the run, like fugitives, en cavale. And at last, prêt à tout, prêt à tout, ready for everything, whatever it takes. Prêt à tout. C'est parti. Je sais que tu m'en veux. Je sais ce que vous vivez à Kraut. Ah bon, tu sais. Tu sais quoi Tu sais la peur La honte Tu sais les regards méprisants okay. Tu sais Raoul qui se réveille en pleine nuit en hurlant Je te jure. Non Ne dis pas que t'es désolé parce que t'es désolé de rien du tout. Tu penses que ta gueule, hein, Sam, c'est tout. On s'en va, Claire. Raoul, toi et moi. On quitte la France. On se barre loin, là où personne nous connaît. J'ai pris un aller simple sur un cargo qui quitte Marseille dans 48 heures. Je viens de comprendre un truc, là. T'es fou, en fait. T'es réellement fou. Tu crois que Raoul et moi, on va tout quitter pour te suivre On sera ensemble. On sera une famille. On sera pas une famille. On sera en cavale. C'est ça que tu veux pour ton fils Qui passe sa vie à regarder par-dessus son épaule Tu veux vraiment arranger les choses Je suis prêt à tout pour ça. Bon. Alors livre-toi à la police. C'est la seule solution. C'est ce que je pensais. T'es pas un héros, Hassan. T'es un lâche. Yay! Did you hear these three expressions? By the way, as usual, you will find today's lesson in a written blog post as well as the full written subtitles, resources, surprises and more over at my website. I will leave a link in the video description below and it's all free. But let's get back to Lupin. By that, I mean Arsène Lupin. Arsène Lupin, the fictional gentleman burglar, an iconic character in the French culture since 1905, a French superhero who could commit crime and serve justice. The Netflix show Lupin is not about good old Arsène Lupin though, but about a fan and copycat of the character in modern times, Hassan Diop. He's played by French actor Omar Sy, who appeared in movies such as Intouchable, in English The Upside, and more. Hassan has a secret meeting in the middle of Paris with his estranged wife, Claire, played by Ludivine Sagnier, who starred in various movies from Cyrano de Bergerac to Huit Femmes to The Young Pope and more. You'll find more about the show, the actors and their filmography over at my website. But now let's dive back into our scene once again, except this time with the subtitles in French. And I will run it a tiny bit slower so that you can listen better to the words they say and how they say it. What can you understand now? Je sais que tu m'en veux. Je sais ce que vous vivez avec Raoul. Ah bon, tu sais. Tu sais quoi? Tu sais la peur? La honte? Tu sais les regards méprisants? Claire. Tu sais Raoul qui se réveille en pleine nuit en hurlant? Je te jure. Non! Ne dis pas que tu es désolé parce que tu es désolé de rien du tout. Tu penses que ta gueule, ça, c'est tout. On s'en va, Claire. Raoul, toi et moi. On quitte la France. On se barre loin, là où personne ne nous connaît. J'ai pris un aller simple sur un cargo qui quitte Marseille dans 48 heures. 
Je viens de comprendre un truc, là. T'es fou, en fait. T'es réellement fou. Tu crois que Raoul et moi, on va tout quitter pour te suivre On sera ensemble. On sera une famille. On sera pas une famille. On sera en cavale. C'est ça que tu veux pour ton fils Qui passe sa vie à regarder par-dessus son épaule Tu veux vraiment arranger les choses Je suis prêt à tout pour ça. Bon. Alors, libre-toi la police. C'est la seule solution. C'est bien ce que je pensais. Papa et Roi Hassan. T'es un lâche. Fantastic. Now, you might have noticed that all the characters don't pronounce all the letters properly. For example, you might notice that lots of E uh or E uh sound disappear in real spoken French. Especially in the small words such as je, ce or que, even before a consonant. These are real spoken French rules. In school, you might have seen correct French. The proper French grammar that you need to read French newspapers and write essays. And that's great. But you have to realize that spoken French that you will hear in French streets, in cafes and in media is almost a different language with its own rules. And you need to practice both of them in order to feel confident in any situation, keep speaking French and build better connections. Let's run the scene together, but this time we will break it down together. I will stop and explain things as we go. Right off the bat, let's talk about two things. The first one is the French expression tu m'en veux, with a silent X. We don't say tu m'en veux, we say tu m'en veux. Tu m'en veux, which means you're mad at me, or more specifically, you're resentful, you blame me for something, you are holding a grudge. It is en vouloir, en vouloir, literally wanting some, and not vouloir, to want on its own. It is not vouloir on its own. It is tu m'en veux, tu m'en veux, or like je lui en veux, I am mad at him, je lui en veux, and not je le veux, I want it, or tu me veux, you want me. Beware of the embarrassing mistake here. And the second thing is eating the e, uh, eating the e, uh, as we have mentioned. In real spoken French, je sais que tu m'en veux, I know that you're mad at me, je sais que tu m'en veux, becomes je sais que tu m'en veux, je sais que tu m'en veux, je sais que tu m'en veux. Here I deleted the e uh, in the subtitles so that it matches the real pronunciation. So you can notice that they swallow letters without me pointing at it every time. In real sentences in French, what you will hear doesn't always match the pronunciation that you learned at school for each word individually. This is real everyday spoken French pronunciation practice. But I have to say, when you transcribe it, it becomes incorrect written French. You would never write it this way, at least in anything more official than a text message, for example. Je sais ce que vous vivez avec Raoul. Ah bon, tu sais. Tu sais quoi Tu sais la peur La honte Tu sais les regards méprisants Tu sais Raoul qui se réveille en pleine nuit en hurlant Je te jure. Non Ne dis pas que t'es désolé parce que t'es désolé de rien du tout. Tu penses qu'à ta gueule, hein, Sam, c'est tout. Ooh, what a line. Once again, we have informal French pronunciation such as saying non, non instead of non, or eating letters. I point out each sentence of this in the written lesson for today's video on the blog post over on my website. And you will find more about her question, which is tu sais quoi, you know what, which is a common way to ask informal questions in French. I also want to point out some very heavy vocabulary here, such as tu penses qu'à ta gueule, you only think about yourself, tu penses qu'à ta gueule. In correct French, la gueule is the animal's mouth. But in real French, it is an impolite swear word for your mouth or your face. It gives weight to Claire's frustration, having to live with la honte, shame, la honte, and people being méprisant, 
méprisant contemptuous, méprisant, méprisant comes from le mépris, contempt, le mépris. And it is also a very famous movie by Jean-Luc Godard. Dieu, tu m'aimes encore Oui, beaucoup. Tu m'aimes encore On s'en va, Claire. Raoul, toi et moi. On quitte la France, on se barre loin, là où personne ne nous connaît. J'ai pris un aller simple sur un cargo qui quitte Marseille dans 48 heures. Here we have three expressions around the same idea. On s'en va, on s'en va, we are leaving, and on quitte la France, we are leaving France, on quitte la France, which are both correct French. Then on se barre, on se barre, which is a slang version, on se barre. You could also say on se casse, for we are leaving, on se casse. Oh, and un aller simple, un aller simple is a one-way trip. Un aller simple. It is the complement of un aller-retour, un aller-retour, a round trip. Un aller-retour. Un aller simple and un aller-retour can be very useful vocabulary if you're preparing a trip to France. Je viens de comprendre un truc, là. This construction, using venir de and a verb in the infinitive, is a tense called the immediate past or recent past. So here with comprendre, comprendre, which means to understand, to realize, it means, for instance, I just realize or I only now realize. It is a very good tool for you when you forgot the conjugation of a past tense in French. You just have to say, je viens de, it's much simpler, je viens de. Oh, and un truc is a very, very, very usual way to say une chose for a thing, une chose or quelque chose, something in informal spoken French. T'es fou, en fait. T'es réellement fou. Tu crois que Raoul et moi, on va tout quitter pour te suivre On sera ensemble. On sera une famille. On sera pas une famille. On sera en cavale. C'est ça que tu veux pour ton fils Qui passe sa vie à regarder par-dessus son épaule Tu veux vraiment arranger les choses Je suis prêt à tout pour ça. In informal French, the pronunciation of je suis for I am, je suis, often becomes je suis, je suis, je suis. Repeat after me. Je suis là for I'm here. Je suis là. Je suis là. Good. Alors, livre-toi à la police. C'est la seule solution. C'est bien ce que je pensais. T'es pas un héros, Hassan. Finally, notice that in real spoken French, tu, the singular you, tu, 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 for friends and family, loses the u before a vowel. So instead of tu es, like here, it becomes te, te, te. And un lâche is a coward. Un lâche, un lâche. We have an accent circonflex on the a, but it has no influence on the pronunciation. You'll find more about this one in the blog post for today's lesson. Congratulations, now you can understand the whole scene by yourself. Or can't you? Let's try one last time as our final test for today. Let's run this scene as if it were on real French TV. And tell me, can you now understand what's going on and hear the different words that they use? For the final time, c'est parti! Je sais que tu m'en veux. Je sais ce que vous vivez avec Raoul. Ah bon, tu sais Tu sais quoi Tu sais la peur La honte Tu sais les regards méprisants Tu sais Raoul qui se réveille en pleine nuit en hurlant Je te jure. Non Ne dis pas que t'es désolé parce que t'es désolé de rien du tout. Tu penses qu'à ta gueule, Hassan, c'est tout. On s'en va, Claire Raoul, toi et moi. On quitte la France. On se barre loin, là où personne nous connaît. J'ai pris un aller simple sur un cargo qui quitte Marseille dans 48 heures. Je viens de comprendre un truc, là. T'es fou, en fait. T'es réellement fou. Tu crois que Raoul et moi, on va tout quitter pour te suivre On sera ensemble. On sera une famille. On sera pas une famille. On sera en cavale. C'est ça que tu veux pour ton fils Qui passe sa vie à regarder par-dessus son épaule Tu veux vraiment arranger les choses je suis prêt à tout pour ça. Bon. Alors livre-toi à la police. C'est la seule solution. 
c'est bien ce que je pensais. Pareil, Roi Hassan. T'es un lâche. Congratulations! That was much easier than the first time, right? I would be so proud of you if you could now hear what they're saying. And now you can try your hands at other scenes from the show. Or you can learn with me with another fantastic TV show called 10%. Just click on your screen right here and I will see you in this lesson. Allez, à tout de suite!